What is your favorite slogan? Nike says, "Just do it." Or if you go to your gym, gym coach might say, "You need to build your muscle. You need to build yourself." You know, a lot of times when we go to a exciting or inspiring event, they always or most likely they talk about building ourselves. Now, is it really about the building the kingdom of God, or is it really the spiritual building? Now, in today's passage, which is First Corinthians chapter fourteen, Apostle Paul says the similar things about building. So again, is it like a gym coach building the build、uh, the muscle, or is it a Nike just do it? So just do whatever you want to do, so that you will have you will add the value to your day and then to your work, so you will enjoy your work. So is it really self worth develop development? Well, we need to look at what re- really that means. Apostle Paul listed so many spiritual gifts, gifts of prophecy, teaching, and all those gifts. So what is really the point of having all the gifts? Is it about how cool we are, how successful, how spiritual we are? No, the purpose is edification, which means building. So let's look at today's passage and let's see what that really means. In the First Corinthians fourteen twenty five through twenty six, it says, "The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you." What is the outcome then, brethren? When you assemble, each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Okay, so t- today's key word is. Edification. Edification in Greek means building. So, what should we build? More importantly, why?、Uh, what does it really mean? Why we do、uh, the building? How does it really look like? So, there are three things. The answer is actually in the previous verse, verse twenty-five. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. So, there are three things. The first thing. That uh, the uh, the edification means fall on his face, which means to repent, turn away from our sin, and turn to our God. And the second one is worship God, and the third one is declare God's presence in the church. So these three things mean edification. So let's look at one by one. So again, let's go back to verse twenty-five. It says, "The secrets of heart." Are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face. Hmm. What does really?、Uh, what does this really mean? Now, when you look at the、uh, verse twenty-six, today's、uh, the passage here. It says, "What is the outcome then, brethren? When you assemble, each one has a psalm, which means te-、uh, the praising, and the teaching is the、uh, exposing the word of God. Revelation is it's, it's really the exposing the heart of people, and a tongue, speaking tongue, and interpretation. Let all these things, let all these spiritual gifts be done for edification in the building, but." What does it have to do with fall on his face? I mean, it's almost like an opposite to the building. It's like、uh, you know, being really、uh, disappointed about self, about myself, and then being really humble about myself. It sounds like totally opposite to the building. But if you look at the Bible very carefully, the the uh, uh, repentance, falling on face, is a building. It's an edification. You know, in Luke chapter eighteen,、uh, Jesus told a parable of two men. The one person prays before the people and then praises about himself, like I'm not like this, those、uh, thieves. I'm not like those robbers. I'm not like those sinners. I am almost perfect. God, thank you so much for making me so perfect. Thank you, God. It's almost like a praising God, but inside, it's almost it is really the praising himself. But there is another man who is justified according to Jesus. But this man did not. Not even look up to the sky because he did not feel worthy to praise God. But he said, "Lord, please forgive me. I am sinner." Now Jesus said, "This person who humbled himself and who、uh, repented of his sin is justified." What does that really mean? He is really the edified, the edification, the building, the kingdom building. It's not like the muscle building. It is really to get down on our knees and fall on our face. We cannot even look up the sky because we feel, we learned, we realized how sinful we are. Now, spiritual gift, Apostle Paul says. 
you know, you have a lot of gifts like a spirit, uh, you know, tongue, and interpretation, and prophecies, and all that. But he was saying, you know, do not stop prophesying because we need to, we need it. Because when you do it, you can, um, the Holy Spirit can expose the heart of people. And if the non believer comes to the church, you know, somehow this man or woman uh, hears the word of God spoken by the spiritual, uh, the people who have the spiritual gifts, and then the, his or her sins, are for, uh, are exposed so that they feel very shame about themselves. But that is actually a good thing. It's not a bad thing because they are looking at, they, they are realizing how sinful they are before the Lord so that they can repent, they can turn away from their sin, they can confess their sin, and they can come to know God. This is what edification really means. The first thing that we need to do, we need to have, we need to uh, really seek is that the spiritual gifts that we have to be used to expose someone's the sins so that it's we, it's not to judge them but it is really for them to fall on their face before the Lord before God so that they can repent of their sins if you truly meet God the first thing is not really the praise it's really the repentance that's what Peter did that when Peter saw Jesus when he saw that Jesus was different Jesus is the really the Messiah the first thing Peter said leave me Lord because I am a sinner that is the right posture According to Isaiah 6, Isaiah also had the same thing. When he saw the glory of God, he said, I am an unclean lips. I'm about to die. When you truly meet God, that is the first, imp- first reaction that we fall on our face. And that is really to build the church, to build the kingdom of God, to build the person to really repent of his or her sin. The second one, the second one is um, the uh, worshiping the Lord. Let's look at today's passage again and look at uh, for verse 25. It says, So fall on his face and worship God. The second one, second posture that we need to have is worship God. Now fall on his face is not enough. I mean, what is the point when you fall on your face and you confess your, you confess your sin, but are you going to do that like a forever? Of course, we need to continue to repent of our sin, but repentance is not the only thing that we need to do. We need to worship the Lord. It's all about worshiping the Lord. If you truly meet God, you will know who you are, that you have so many sins so that you need to turn away from your sin, but you will be fascinated by how great and how merciful God is because even though we are very sinful, but God loves us. God is merciful that he sent his only son to die for our sin and that mercy must be uh, forever remembered forever praised so we are just as stunned by the glory of God and worship of God now you know David you know in Psalm the all of our Psalm that we can see that David was genuinely seeking the Lord uh, I was reading as Psalm chapter 86 this morning amazing chapter he was going through David was going through very difficult uh, tough time, but his focus was not the toughness of his life, but his life, his focus was the glory of God. He was seeking God. He was crying out to God all day long. It was not like a 30 minutes uh, short prayer, but it was all day long prayer, crying out to the Lord. He was focused on the Lord. I mean, David was a king and he lived in the palace and probably he had the best troop around him. So he did not really have any need, earthly needs, but he was always desperate before the Lord. And this that's the posture that you and I need to have, that we need to worship the Lord. And when you when you lead someone to worship the Lord, that is how you edify the person. The edification is not about self-glorification. Sometimes we are confused. Like when you when you hear the word of word edification, it's like uh, we're complimenting each other. Of course, in the church, we, we need to encourage one another. Even Apostle Paul not only pointed out the sins in the church, but also he encouraged, he praised uh, some of his church members. So it, it is necessary. We need to do that. But at the end of the day, the purpose is not really to feel good about ourselves, but we it's really to give glory to God, give thanks Thanks to God who gives, who gave the spiritual gifts to us so that we can exercise the spiritual gift uh, to bless others. It's not to boast about ourselves, but it is really to bless, to be the channel of blessing to other people uh, for the glory of God. So it is the worship of God and that is the edification. 
But if you end up just glorifying yourself or just uh, making other people to feel good about themselves, it sounds like a really good edification, but it is a false edification because there's no worship of God. Again, the worship of God is really the edification. The thirdly, the edification, the uh, third element, element of edification is um, declaring God's presence in the church. So let's look at this passage again. Look at verse 26. 25, declaring that God is certainly among you. Now, it's, notice this word, uh, declaring that God is certainly, so this is uh, the presence of God, but instead of saying among uh, you as an individual, but it's uh, among you, it's a collective, which is the church. What does really this mean? Sometimes, you know, people love to hear the compliment about uh, individual compliments, uh, individual praise. For example, if someone says, Hey, Sammy, I'm so inspired by your sermon. Thank you so much for your sermon. Uh, I truly believe that God is in you. Of course, I love to hear that compliment. Of course, I love to uh, do that. And, and who would not like that? So we're so used to or we were eager to hear that kind of compliments or praise. But Apostle Paul is saying, no, no, no. It's not really about individual things. It, the God is, yes, of course, God is with you. God is in you. But do not be too much individualistic. We need to understand that God has called us as the church and God is with the church. God God is among us. When there are two or three are gathered in the, in the name of Christ Jesus, Jesus is there. So they, he has the communal focus. So when you really, let's say when you exercise your spiritual gift, um, then someone came to Jesus Christ and, you know, this person repented of his or her sin and then pray, began to praise the Lord and then Finally, this person says, I would love to join this church because I see that God, the presence of God is in this church. At the end of the day, it's not about how great preacher you are, how great prayer warrior you are, that your presence of God is surely strong in you, individual. But the focus is, oh, wow, God is truly in this church in this body of Christ. So none of us get the self-glorification, but it is all the God glorification. It is glorifying God through, in and through the church. Now, we're living in a very difficult time that uh, the people do not really see much of a hope in this world. Where can we find the true hope outside of the church? The church is the place where the God's presence is clear and strong so that outside the world must see the presence of God in our churches so that they can clearly say church is the God's plan A and church is the hope. So we need to go to church. We need to worship together as the church, with the church. We need to plant more churches all around the world to really show that God is alive and God loves you so that the dying world would find the hope in Christ Jesus through the church. So that is the edification. So to uh, sum it all together, you know, edification is not to encourage one another individually for the self-glorification or for uh, making them feel good about themselves, but it is really to have someone to fall on his or her face so that that person would worship the Lord and declare that God's presence, God's presence is in the church. So that is the edification. So that when you see someone coming to Jesus Christ, uh, praising the Lord and joining the church, that is kingdom growth. That is the advance, advancement of God's kingdom. And that is edification, what it means to edify. So how should we live? How should we apply this? First of all, we need to pray really hard. We need to preach the gospel of Christ Jesus. Yes, God has given us many different gifts. Uh, the prophecies and teaching, service, tongue, and interpretation, all those gifts. But the purpose, uh, the point is not what gifts we have. But the point is what why we have the gifts. The gifts is not for us to uh, divide ourselves by comparing one another, but it is really to 
edify one another. Now, we just learned what that edification means. It's not to say, oh, you have a great gift, so feel good about yourself. God is with you. No, that is not the purpose. It is really to have someone to repent of his or her sin. We need to pray really hard. God, please, please save that person so uh, that that person would come to know his or her sin. We need to pray really hard for the non-believers every day, and we need to pray uh, for the, even non-believers in the church as well, so that even uh, the people who think that they are Christians would be exposed by the words of God so that they can truly repent of their sins. And then also we need to help people to focus on God and worship the Lord. Uh, when someone says, wow, your preaching was good and your food was good. Thank you so much for serving. Of course, you know, we can say that. Uh, we don't have to have the false humility as if that everything is just uh, 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 not good for us or we're, we're nothing, 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 nothing. No, we are nothing without God. So the point is not about what, what the gifts we have, but we need to glorify God. So if someone says, your preaching was good, and say, well, thank you so much for your conversation. Thank you for your kind words. It's because God gave me the gifts of preaching or gifts of teaching so that you can be edified. You know, that is how we can glorify the Lord and that is the edification. Um, likewise, anything when God uh, gives, when people uh, praise us, we need to give praise to the Lord. And also, God has given you the spiritual gifts if you are truly born again Christian. Now, you need to use the gifts, not for yourself, but for edification again. If God has given you the musical talent, use it. Use it for the glory of God. Don't use that musical talent for yourself or for other people uh, outside of the church, but you, God can use that, your talent, to bring someone to the realization of his or her sin so that they can praise God together through your music. So use it for the glory of God. That is the edification. And thirdly, um, invite people, but invite people to church, but not to push them, but let them declare God's presence. Let them see the presence of God in the church, not just individually, but corporately, because the church is the body of Christ. They need to see the presence of God. So we need to pray and seek God's will and uh, preach the word of God and invite people to the church so that they can see the presence of God in and through the church. So that is what edification really means. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for teaching us what the edification really means, Lord. Father, we pray that uh, we will deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow you so we can truly use our talents, use our gifts, not to elevate ourselves over other people, but really to bless others so that they can truly come to realization of their sins. They can praise you and then uh, they can truly see your presence in our churches, Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen.